Hello, I welcome you to another session. This is Dr. Rick Edley, the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology. We want to look at the reproductive system, basically concerning the gonads, male and female gonads. We want to see what that stands for. And then we also have the external genitalia, you should be able to differentiate between that from the gonads. So, by introduction, we will say that the gonads can be male-oriented or female-oriented. So, we look at the male first. That is the testis, okay, and that is the male gonad. That is an external genitalia, the penis. This is the female reproductive system, general structure, not that detailed. So the ovary is also the gonad. And that is the vagina. Usually the vagina has a canal, so that is more of internal. The external genitalia of the female reproductive system would be mainly the labia majora and minora. Okay, that's actually covers the vestibule into the vagina. So the plural for testis is, uh, <laughs> as you can see, the testicle is one and testis with E is plural. Okay, and then testicle is also Testis with I, T E S T I S. So with I is singular, the plural will be E for the two. But if you want to use this for the plural, the testicle, then just add S to it, it becomes testicles. Okay, testicle is one, or testis one, and then testis two, or plural. Okay, then the ovary is also ovaries for the two. So one is ovary and then two or more ovaries. Okay, so those are the gonads. Then within the gonads, you have what we call the gametes. Okay, so the spermatozoa is a gamete. And then the oocyte is also a gamete. So you should be able to differentiate between the two, what a gonad is and what gametes are and what external genitalia actually is. So the testis is the gonad. Within the gonad, you have gametes. So an example is the spermatozoa, okay, which we'll be looking at in detail. Then this is ovary, ovaries for two. Within it, you have gametes known as the oocytes, okay. So gametogenesis, gamete and genesis. As you know, genesis from the Bible is the beginning or the formation or the creation. You see, so genesis is like the source where something is derived. So you want to see the source of the gametes. Remember, the gametes are found within the gonads. So the male process is known as a spermatogenesis. You want to form sperm. So the sperm here becomes a gamete. It's the same as spermato, spermatozoa, as I said earlier on. Okay, so spermatozoa and sperm are the same. Then oogenesis will describe that for the female and that will take care of the oocytes, formation of the oocyte or the ootip. So for the male, a mature uh, gamete, which is actually a spermatozoa, or what we generally call sperm, will look like this. It will have these three major divisions. That is the head, the middle piece, and then the tail. Okay. Easily we can um, describe this in a layman's term as a tadpole-like structure tadpole the ones you usually find in ponds where 
or gutters where toads or frogs are okay when the eggs hatch they form tadpoles and they move in the water that is a very typical example of how a spermatozoa or a sperm looks like but you can see the sperm or spermatozoa with the unaided eye you have to look at it under the microscope okay so the closest we can use uh, to you know describe it is the tadpole we see in ponds and gutters then for the oocyte that is what you find in here okay as the oocyte with the nucleus there and then you have around it certain cells known as granulosa cells or follicular cells that nourish the oocyte okay all right then these ones will actually be the tika cells which um, is actually a detailed aspect of gametogenesis we are not going to cover but i just want you to know okay you have tika interna and tika externa so that's just for your information but basically this is how the oocyte looks like it has actually grown you know to a point when it's it's just alone you won't even find this what we call the antrum there it will only be this oocyte with some flattened granulosa cell with just one layer of it okay what we call the primordial you know follicles but again you may not need that case so we can use this diagram also to accentuate what you have said so spermatogonium is 2n okay then you form uh, it grows to become a primary spermatocyte which is also 2n then first meiotic division where homologous chromosomes are separating but still sister chromatids are intact so you have secondary spermatocyte 2n then the secondary spermatocyte will undergo meiosis 2 split sister chromatids so now you have spermatids then it undergoes differentiation known as spermiogenesis to form the spermatozoa then for oogenesis you have the oogonium then primary oocytes then it goes undergoes the first meiotic division so you have secondary oocyte 2n and then first polar body which will not survive much to term then you have this secondary oocyte undergoing second meiotic division to split into another large one and then a smaller cell which is the second polar body then the ootid here differentiates to form the ovum All right so basically that is what happens then these oocytes are growing in cells that nourish them as i mentioned earlier on granulosa cells another name we give to the granulosa cells is the follicle okay so if you are listening carefully remember i mentioned primordial follicle being a single flattened cell that surrounds the oocyte okay so you have primordial follicle then you have primary follicles which will become more um, what do you call it cuboidal in in nature so the primordial follicles are squamous or flat like pavement blocks the cells are flat around the oocyte then the primary follicle will now change from the flattened nature to what a more spherical nature then they become secondary follicles and then pre antra follicles because they are just about to have the antrum or the space which will now become antra follicles and then there will be ovulation so those uh, granulosa cells or follicular cells that surrounded the oocyte is what is going to become the corona radiata right then if there's fertilization to become a zygote and then um, transported by cilia and redemic beating from the fallopian tube into the uterus for implantation okay 
and that is where first week of embryogenesis will start but we are not going to tackle that we are going to do that when you come to the medical school so inside the testis once more vertical section like i use the orange and the egg this is what you are going to find you find the base here and then the inner portion of the testis up as you go upward so the young spermatogonium will be at the base here okay so you can see basal lamina peritubular cells okay so that is the boundary there and then the growth continues towards the inside which means that the cells you see in the middle portion are grown or mature or older than those at the base so as you saw that we started with the spermatogonium then primary spermatocyte secondary sperm the same thing here just that this has been turned upside down okay so you find the spermatogonia here at the base you have two main types the type a dark and then type a pale okay type a dark and then type a pale and the type a pale is going to give rise to the type b spermatogonia okay so type a dark type a pale usually even the type a duck gives rise to a type a pill and it still maintains its type a duck as if it has done nothing okay after giving rise to type a pill so it is the type a pill that will continue mitotically to produce type b spermatogonia whilst the type a duck still stays so it's like a reservoir so it's a stem cell that is reserved that is why Mills can grow very old and still be able to produce sperm because they have this type A duct as a stem cell there. And even the type A pill will also be self renewing and rejuvenating and producing more of the type B. So it is this type B that will continue the journey to become the primary spermatocyte and so on and so forth. Then, of note, is these um, tentacle like structures you see. These are the Setoli cells, okay? They form what we call Setoli, Setoli tight junctions to prevent the developing spermatogonia from coming into contact with the blood, the general blood circulation. Because there are antibodies and antigens in the blood and you don't want them to come in contact with the developing spermatogonia, else there will be a problem. So, the spermato the Cetoli cells will shield the growing spermatogonia throughout its process okay so that it doesn't come into contact with those uh, antigens in the blood all right so you can see here a dark spermatogonia reserve stem cell which gives rise to a pill spermatogonia self-renewing stem cell which gives rise to type B spermatogonia, which will continue as the primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, and so on. So what are functions of Sertoli cells for support, for nutrition, uh, fibroblast growth factors, peritubular cells, also known as myoid cells, uh, colony stimulating factors, then you also have Leydig cells. So whenever you hear of Sertoli cells, likely you also hear of Leydig cells, okay? which produce testosterone, right? So during fertilization, assuming that the spermatozoa is now complete and everything is fine, um, it's going to penetrate the granulosa cells called the corona radiata, and then you are going to penetrate and to fertilize an egg. Fertilize an egg here. Yeah. So you can see that the sperms are moving from one, two, three, and then four. So the one, two, three, and four are actually the steps that the spermatozoa is going to travel. Okay. So here you have sperm nucleus containing chromosomes 
as the male chromosome will be in the sperm. Remember, it started as what? Spermatogonium and then grew all the way to become a sperm or spermatozoa. Then acrosome containing enzymes. Remember, I mentioned spermiogenesis that it forms acrosome, then the hair, then, then the tail and all that. Then plasma membrane of the sperm, because the sperm is just a cell, just like any cell has a plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane is going to split, okay, and perforations in the acrosome wall due to certain enzymes, okay, that are located within the head of the spermatozoa, like the acrosin and the rest. So that is going to expose the nucleus containing the chromosome to allow penetration okay, into the egg. But remember these are follicular cells or granulosa cells, so the sperm has to make its way. So some of these enzymes also will eat up you know, these cells, then enter, help the sperm to enter. So that's the zona pellucida, that's the plasma membrane of the oocytes. Okay. So at this point, it's a secondary oocyte, but once fertilization occurs, it will cause the second meiotic division of the oocyte to be complete, to become a mature oocyte. So the oocyte is always suspended as a secondary oocyte at a metaphase 2 until you have a sperm penetrating it to, as it were, initiate the completion of the second meiotic division. Then it becomes a mature oocyte, and the nucleus of the sperm will unite with that of the female. So you will be having this. So you can see that the chromosomes are now together. Okay, so this is the uh, female chromosome at metaphase. Remember, it was arrested at that point. So once there's fertilization, it will continue the rest of the cell cycle. Okay. Then you have the head of the sperm, at least one of it has entered. So that is the nucleus of the sperm and that of the egg, okay, or ovum. Then the intermingle and then the zygote continues its journey. Now, one thing you have to note is what we call zona reaction. Immediately, a sperm enters an egg. It causes a different configuration of the zona pellucida, changes its property so that no other sperm can enter or should enter. We call that the zona reaction. So it's a change in the property of the zona pellucida to prevent polyspermy. Polyspermy means plenty sperm. Okay, poly, plenty, many. You don't want many sperms to enter the egg, else you are going to add more chromosomes than a human being is supposed to have. You have more than 46 and you can survive. So thank you very much. I hope this video helps.